Cool, I will start. Um, so we keep uh, things on track. I don't want to be blamed for it. Uh, I'm Robert Nesaros, which is a Hungarian name. It means uh, butcher in English. I'm in my 30s. Uh, I live in Romania, where I'm joining from. I've been a developer for a few years now. And um, initially, what uh, got me interested in end-to-end -end testing particularly was some work done on a legacy application, on a legacy application where uh, there were no tests and introducing any kind of other test than end-to-end uh, -end test is quite complex because that would mean you would have to do some refactoring and uh, with end-to-end -end testing, we can kind of like solve this problem and uh, give us like a head start and a good baseline uh, for tests so we can do refactorings uh, later. Today, we will talk about end-to-end -end testing in the context of WordPress with Playwright, which is a tool, and uh, especially with the test utils from uh, WordPress. To uh, lay down some expectations, first, we will um, get on the same page. We will have a working definition of what testing is, what end-to-end -end testing is particularly, then we will take a look how uh, we ended up in the situation that we have two test utils today in WordPress and how that is going to be solved in the future. Then uh, we will dig into Playwright and the test utils based on that. Then uh, all the things that we discussed will be put uh, in use uh, in a sample project that I prepared. And there we can see everything uh, working together. And uh, at the end, we will try to draw some conclusions. I will share a few more resources that you can uh, follow. And there will be hopefully uh, five minutes for questions that uh, I'm happy to answer. Then we will say goodbye. So what end-to-end -end testing, we can say that end-to-end -end testing is a type of testing. Many types of tes testing exist. Sometimes uh, the types of tests are represented in a pyramid of tests where end-to-end -end test is at the top and at the bottom we have the unit test. And why uh, we have this arrangement hopefully will be clearer uh, by the end of the talk. Testing, uh, this is like a definition or um, a formulation from the book, full stack testing. All the things which are like underlined are clickable. So you can just like follow the um, links, find more information there. So testing is just a way to validate our expectations. In the uh, software world, we are validating the behavior of our application. What is important here is that we write the expectations, so the expectations have to be right, otherwise our tests are uh, worthless. And just this practice of uh, reflecting on the our expectations from the application typically brings a lot of clarity in all kinds of um, ways. We want tests to be repeatable. We want to uh, have the test run as often as possible, because if we run it often, then the chances of uh, introducing bugs is just uh, slimmer. And to uh, do it manually and repeating the same test, which quite might be like 100 tests are uh, pretty boring and time consuming. So we can use tools to do that. We can never really replace manual testing and the two can coexist easily together. And especially because automated tests typically are derived from the work 
that was initially done by uh, manual testing. So with all these definitions, um, we can get closer to what end-to-end -end testing is. This is a description from an article from the WordPress uh, Make website. And here are a few things that are important. One is that we are interacting with the application with end-to-end -end test. So we are not testing a function like we do in unit test. We are interacting with the application as a whole which kind of like means that we have to have the entire application booted. So we have to have WordPress running. And this is why we have the production-like environment also in the description. In end-to-end -end tests, typically we use the browsers to perform our tests and we are validating different flows. This means that we are mostly interested in a journey that a real user takes and the things that happen during a journey. A uh, journey you can imagine in an e-commerce setting that the user searches for a product, it adds it to the cart, goes to the checkout, and uh, pays for it. So that could be one flow. Of course, like uh, leaving a comment would be a very different flow. That end-to-end -end testing is used. In this way, if you just go back to that pyramid, you can see that end-to-end -end test is a high-level test, which means we are not interested in the foundational level of our application, which is the code. And that's what unit test does. It verifies the code. Here, we are really verifying the integration of the entire components that we have. Playwright is a tool to perform these end-to-end -end tests. There are other tools like Puppeteer. Puppeteer is one of the other uh, tools used in WordPress for tests. Playwright is a more modern one. It's actually a fork of uh, Puppeteer. Uh, it's considered more reliable these days, and it really also allows testing in uh, all kinds of browsers in all kinds of operating systems in uh, continuous integrations. We can even test um, native um, mobile emulation. And what is more important for others outside the WordPress ecosystem, it also supports other languages like Java or uh, .NET. The WordPress test utils is um, some kind of helper functions that are uh, on top of the testing tools like Playwright or Puppeteer. These test utils are practically used by Gutenberg, but they are also integrated by Core. And because they are published like standalone packages, we can also like uh, consume it and use it in our themes or uh, plugins. So this, this is how a test looks in uh, Playwright. And I underlined the part which comes from the test utils because Playwright in essence doesn't have any knowledge of CMSs and also not about WordPress. So we need the test util to perform some actions in a very convenient way. We can still do all the things uh, that test utils provide without the test utils itself, but it makes it much more convenient. The rest, selecting an element like a heading in this case is available in Playwright and also the assertion that that heading is visible on the page is also coming from uh, Playwright. Um, to somehow complete that definition from the, uh, from the article from the WordPress, this is, comes again from that full stack um, testing book. Here, what I highlighted is that we can only have just a few tests, which practically activates all components. So if you think about that e-commerce example, during that journey that the user takes, from searching a product, adding it to the cart and going to the checkout, it practically activates all or many functionalities of our application. And with just a few tests, we can 
confirm that those parts of our system work and interact uh, well. And in that sense, if you think about the pyramid, we can argue that uh, we can have just a few end-to-end -end tests, and that might be even enough. The other part to complete this book argues that uh, downstream systems should be also included. In the e-commerce example, a downstream system would be another service that we integrate, maybe like QuickBooks for like invoicing. The book argues that uh, during the end-to-end -end test, we should also check that we our integration with third-party system is functioning. So end-to-end -end test should cover that. For example, after a successful checkout, actually the invoice is somehow generated in the QuickBooks or is it available in our system? Now going back to the two test utils and how the entire end-to-end uh, -end testing in WordPress started. So the Gutenberg project was kind of like kicked out uh, at the end of 2017. And even in the early phases, end-to-end uh, -end test was integrated in Gutenberg. Initially, they used Puppeter and all the work that was done in Gutenberg regarding testing, the foundation work practically resulted in the standalone packages that we use today. And uh, so in the middle of 2019, so kind of like two years after Gutenberg was started, the, um, and after the foundation was laid for the test utils, a standalone package was published, which is um, under the WordPress slash end-to-end test utils. And the first testing core was added. And also the, it was integrated into the continuous integration pipeline. And the fact that it was published as a standalone package meant that other plugins or everybody from the community could start uh, using it, which many did. In the next years, uh, there were a few more tests added in core, uh, but not much happened uh, in core, at least not on the surface. When the package was published, initially it still remained in the Gutenberg uh, repository. So lots of work might not um, been in core, but in Gutenberg many things happened. After a bit, after the package was released in 2019, right after one year, already people started discussing about switching to Playwright. Playwright um, started to become more solid. People started noticing it, and there were very good arguments for using it. But it was decided to wait a bit more until the platform became more stable. And um, in 2021, October, after a lot of testing and a lot of work that happened in Gutenberg, where they practically compare, compared the uh, two tools' performance, they took a look at the reliability of the test, it was kind of clear that uh, Playwright is a better um, choice. And because... Uh, there were only a few tests in core. It kind of like made sense to start migrating at least in the Gutenberg. This is where the first proposal was made available to the public. People uh, did not really oppose to it. So practically six months after that, uh, the announce announcement was made that uh, officially the test utils will be switched to Playwright. A uh, really good, uh, clear and solid plan was like formulated and people started uh, following and implementing that plan. The migration pr process is still not finished. You can, uh, we can still help with it. And if you follow the link under this uh, text, you can see how you can engage with it. This, was, this is the migration steps. 
the first was to integrate it in the Gutenberg, which happened practically right before the proposal. The tests are currently migrated from Puppeteer to Playwright in Gutenberg. We are kind of like at 70% now. So there are just a few more tests left. And since there were only a few tests in core, those were already migrated. It's important that the WordPress core is highly tested, but it's not highly tested by end-to-end -end test. And the reason, because end-to-end -end testing is pretty new to the WordPress ecosystem as a whole, but WordPress is very reliable and well-tested with some kind of unit test. And the last step, once the migration happens in Gutenberg, will be practically removing the old package, which is the Puppeter one. The um, practically the migration of the WordPress core just happened uh, in October. So just uh, a few weeks ago, this is, I think, a really important milestone because it um, signals that Playwright is really ready to be used, even if it's still on major version zero, and we won't see the version 1.0 until all the um, tests were migrated in Gutenberg. When this will happen, in my opinion, likely next year, but we can already start using it. Now, digging into a bit Playwright. Playwright is the foundation for the test users. And if we take a look once again of a test, and in all tests, we will see at least an assertion. We will see some kind of actions performed and we will see locators. Locators are practically, you can think of it like uh, selectors, like some kind of query selector that you would do in JavaScript. This is for selecting practically elements on the page. There are many ways to select. Sometimes you want to do it by the label, by the role, by the text or you can just use plain uh, CSS selectors or something more specific to Playwright, which are like test IDs. Once the selectors or the locators are selected, actions can be performed on them. So if, if you're talking about like a text input field, then we can just like fill some value in it. If you're talking about like checkboxes, we can check them, we can even hover over them, we can perform all kinds of user-like actions that we would do uh, as we would browse a website. When we perform those actions, the important part is kind of like to validate our expectations of the things that happened. And we can do that using the expect functions. And um, we can just sometimes simply check that the checkbox was actually checked or some kind of classes were added maybe to rebuild an element we can check that uh, some kind of element became visible in the viewport maybe some kind of scrolling happened we can check uh, rest api responses if things went well or we can actually check that we arrived to the right page after some kind of form was submitted and just with these three things, with uh, locators, actions, and assertions, we can do quite a lot of things. On top of these things that Playwright offers, we, can, we have the end-to-end -end test utils. As mentioned, whatever that the end-to-end -end test util offers is more like conveniences. We could perform those things also with Playwright. One of the things that the test utils offers are more general uh, helpers like that we would do on the page, like pressing keys. This could be very important, for example, in the editor where like some kind of combination of two keys perform some kind of actions. It makes also more convenient to resize the browser or to drag some files from, I don't know, uh, to the screen. Then we have something which is more specific to WordPress, like admin utils, 
like navigating to some kind of admin page or visiting the new site editor or creating posts using that add page or add post uh, button available. Other than that, it also offers conveniences to interact with the WordPress REST API. So just by calling a few methods, we can just create a post, delete all the comments or activate the team. And when some kind of uh, endpoint is not supported or we are dealing with uh, uh, a third party endpoint, we can just use the more lower level request utils REST method to perform really any kind of uh, REST API action, either deleting or just like posting something. Since uh, the test utils were started in Gutenberg, we have a bunch of uh, methods which deal with the editor, inserting blocks, publishing it, going to the preview page, all kinds of things that could be automated or automated and available as a method. Then we have some kind of other utils which are important for doing performance measures like uh, Lighthouse, getting the report, or just checking how the server responds. This kind of like means that we can not just uh, navigate uh, the website with the end-to-end -end, um, and with Playwright, we can actually perform other kinds of tests, which are like performance tests. And on top of this, of course, if we have like a bigger project, we can extract something, uh, some repeating things to project specific utils. And one good example is this, the WooCommerce blocks where they integrated Playwright and the uh, WordPress test utils, but on top of it, they built their own utils. And because we are dealing with WooCommerce, this offers the possibility to add items to the card, go to the checkout, clean the card, everything that you would expect to do in a, in a WooCommerce website. Now that we kind of like have a good understanding of, uh, at least a base understanding what's available, we can take a look at the uh, sample project. And the sample projects tests a community plugin, which is called WP Guest Bar. We are integrated into GitHub Actions, so we have continuous integration and we are using the official Docker images. So there's nothing really complicated going on. If you just like re read ever an article, how to set up WordPress for Docker, it's pretty much uh, the similar thing. So jumping over to the actions, straight to the actions, you can see that we have two branches. We have like a main branch where the tests, tests uh, performed successfully. And we have like another branch where we purposefully fail the test. So we can actually take a look what happens in those uh, cases. Interestingly, uh, the test run on two WordPress versions and two different PHP versions. This is kind of like to demo that it's quite easy to uh, run the same tests in different WordPress versions or even PHP uh, versions. And uh, if we take a look at the steps that are performed, what we have is just like checking out the repository, which is like a core GitHub action feature. Then we have the option, we have the step to set up the test environment. Here, because we are dealing with Docker, we see like a bunch of like downloading all the layers that, um, that are downloaded through uh, WordPress. And once all those things are done, we have the actually the test. And we have eight tests. And what I want here to highlight is that we can actually 
without knowing anything about that WP guest board. We can write the tests in a way to really capture the essence of this plugin. And just by reading the, um, the test descriptions, we can get a really good idea of what the plugin does. So practically, we can describe the specification of the plugin with the test. So if you go over it, you can see that if the plugin is not active, so practically just after installing WordPress, we don't expect to have any admin board. So this is the standard WordPress behavior. If you are not logged in, you don't have an admin board. But once the plugin is activated and we are just a simple visitor, then we expect that we have an admin bar and that admin bar has a login link, which prompts us to log in practically. Other than that, we have the possibility, if you choose to, to display some kind of custom message in that admin bar. And we know that custom message is optional because if we don't set it, there are no custom message displayed. So this verifies there's, there's no fallback um, message display. And we know or we expect that that custom message to expect some kind of HTML2 and to be able to style it, which means that maybe we have the possibility to, I don't know, color the text in red and use some kind of uh, strong text. But once we are logged in, maybe as an admin or as a subscriber, then we expect the plugin to not tamper with the default WordPress behavior, which is just showing the default admin bar with the howdy message and the typical menu items. And on the admin side, the plugin exposes a link under the settings menu which allows us to go to, the, to their option page. And on the settings page of the plugin, we actually have the possibility to set the messages. And practically that's what the plugin does. It's a very single purpose plugin, but it does it really well. Now, how this thing is achieved and how we are testing it. Uh, if you're like maybe checking it after the presentation, there's like a recommended order of browsing and we will practically uh, follow that. And hopefully this will load. It's already loaded. So the first thing is, um, is the configuration of the playwright. Uh, the configuration can be quite complex in some cases, but with just a few things, we can just get started. We can just say that, hey, every test are in the test folder. So like we saw that we have three test files. We can define to have something run before all the tests are performed. And we will take a look what this global setup does. And then we have a few settings turned on, which is like, in case something goes wrong, like one of the tests fails, which we have on our, one of the branches, then we want to maintain all kinds of information like screenshots, videos, traces, just to help us to uh, debug the things that could go wrong. And we saw that Playwright offers the possibility to test in all kinds of browsers and all kinds of devices. Here we are just testing on Firefox, but we could uh, add other browsers here too. Now going to the first default test. Everything that we see here is we discussed it. What we are seeing is some kind of locators. In this case, we are just using a CSS, simply an ID. We have an assertion happening, which we are saying, hey, I want to verify that actually the admin bar is not present 
when the plugin is deactivated. And all this should happen on the front page. So that's why we are using page go to slash, which is assuming it's our root URL and not the admin page that we saw in the presentation. And that's all. With this, we kind of like confirmed our base use case of uh, WordPress. Now, before going to check out the front test, uh, front end test, I want to talk just for a moment about this global setup and why this is needed and why, why you will definitely have it in your test if you will test your team or plugin. Um, because we are testing for this plugin both the front end functionality as a visitor, but we are also testing the admin functionality where we are required to be logged in, we somehow have to perform that logging in step. And um, when we log into WordPress, so when we fill out the username and password, actually WordPress stores a cookie. So for example, if you would log out and you would clear your cookies immediately, you would be immediately logged out because the cookie no longer exists. And because we have repeated tests where we are required to be logged in, instead of logging in over and over again, we do the login process before any tests are ran. So this is the first thing we do. We grab those cookies that are set by the browser and we store it, we persist it. This is what happens here. And whenever we want to be authenticated later on in one of the tests, we just make that cookie available to the browser. This is uh, how we can uh, be authenticated. WordPress kind of like hide this complexity of the steps of logging in, but practically you can imagine that behind the scene it actually fills in the username and the password, but just in a more convenient uh, way. With this information, we can go to the front end because here we have the visitor, but down we have the logged in uh, group. First of all, because there are like multiple tests here, we extracted the step to activate the plugin. In the default test, we just had one test. So we just like deactivated the plugin inside the test, but here, we are doing it practically before the tests are run in this file. And the actual tests performed uh, for the visitor are very similar to the ones that we saw in the default test. We are just trying to grab the admin bar and we are also trying to grab that login link that we expect, expect from the plugin to make it available and we are also grabbing the URL of it. And we are just practically checking if the admin bar is there, if the login link is there, and if the login link actually points to the URL that we expect. And if all these requirements are met, then we uh, consider this test uh, correct. We also have a few tests uh, for the custom message that we discussed. And to also demonstrate the possibility, the option or the way to introduce a custom util, uh, we have this WP guest bar util, which behind the scenes, it hides the complexity of setting up a custom message. Uh, if you will have time, we can just like um, go over it later on. So before going and navigating to the page, we want to set the custom message. So we want to have it in the database before going to the front page. Otherwise, obviously the message would not show up. And we just try to query for that message and we just want to check if it's there. Checking the opposite, it's a bit trickier because um, we cannot simply search for the message or we could, but I find it more, in, more easy 
or more straightforward to look for some kind of element in which the message is rendered and to check for that. Uh, we also have the in the custom util the option to delete the message and uh, it also has the possibility to add that HTML that we are checking out later. And here we see some new things like new uh, methods, assertion methods to practically check the existence of the CSS. So practically we are checking if this style is actually rendered on the page. And this is where that authenticated step and that storage uh, comes into place. To only make that authenticated uh, context available, we, this is why we put it inside this test group. So it's practically not put at the top because that would mean we would be authenticated for all of the tests. This is why this is not commented here. So in this test, because we make available the cookies, we act as a logged in user and we practically just check whatever WordPress uh, does by default, which is adding the how the message and the how the message should practically point to the profile uh, link. Then on the WordPress admin tests, uh, because here we want to be authenticated for all of the tests, we practically made the context available as the first thing. For the same reason, we also do the activation step uh, before any other tests. And here we don't, we should not see anything new. We're practically using the same old locators, the same old assertions that we saw. The more interesting thing is maybe checking the settings page where we make actually use of multiple actions. One is filling the, mess filling the input field with the message, then practically clicking the save button, which in fact will trigger the form to be submitted, which reloads the page. And then we check for the success message and we check for the uh, existence of the message that we set. This is, these are the tests to cover uh, all of them. Now to check uh, the failure, because this looks all good, but many times uh, things fail. So first of all, if things fail, we get some kind of error message already in the console or in this kind of output from the uh, GitHub action. And sometimes this might be uh, enough to debug and know what went wrong. We can get some kind of message that we expected things to not be visible, but we actually got something visible. This already could tell us what went wrong. And later on, we also see that we expected the string, but we received something else. And if this information is not enough, maybe we have some kind of other test, other messages that it's not really clear, then we can make use of those screenshots or that video that we are saving uh, when things went wrong. In the context of GitHub Actions, those are practically saved as artifacts. So we can just like download and inspect whatever went uh, wrong. Obviously, if you are running the test locally, you just have access to the uh, test results immediately. So I already downloaded it in, in advance. Let's take a look. Uh, when something fails, we get a folder for each test that have failed and we immediately get the description of what went wrong. And here we have the 
image, we have the video and the trace. So the things that we, co we configured in the uh, Playwright config. So if you take a look at the screenshot, we actually see that the admin bar is there, even though we expected it to not be there. So this is really a visual way to check what went wrong instead of just reading the message. Uh, the video in this case, it doesn't tell too much because it's practically loading the website. We see the website loading up, but it doesn't give too much extra information compared to the uh, screenshot. But if we take at the other test that went wrong, here we see a bit more in the video, which is like not captured in the screenshot, which is the option to actually filling up. We, we see things happening real time. So the user or the browser filling up the message and the refreshing going on. Still, if this is not enough, we can use this trace file. The trace file can be viewed uh, if, we, if it's just a zip, we can just go to the trace playwright dev, just like drag and drop it here. And this will give the steps of the test. So we can see that initially we navigated to that option page. Then we selected the input and we started typing. And in the next step, we already have the message filled in. Then we selected the save, uh, save changes button and we clicked on it. We refreshed, we checked the uh, setting saved message to be there, the notification, and then we got some kind of error. And the error is practically that we are not getting the right message, at least not the message that we are expecting. And with this trace, it also gives us the option to jump right through to the test and see uh, the exact line where things uh, went wrong. You can also see it's kind of like looks like the net looks like the uh, browsers inspector where we get access to all the network requests happening. We can also see the console messages that might go on and we can actually also check and debug the uh, locators. Cool, how are we standing with the time? Kinda lost track, but if we go back here, uh, go to the presentation, we can uh, draw some conclusions, hopefully. One is uh, that end-to-end um, -end testing is really within reach. This means the basics and the fundamentals are not that complicated. The locators and the uh, actions are just really a bit similar to me, like with jQuery, where it just gives a good uh, simple language to interact with elements on the page. And the assertions might be something new if you never use tests, but I think it's still very understandable. And I think it's a very good starting point uh, because we can cover the, the uh, functionalities of an already existing pro product, in this case of a plugin that we saw. It's also a good starting point to have like a baseline to then introduce some kind of refactorings which are not really doable without um, solid understanding of the product. And I think it's really uh, immediately valuable because just with a few tests, we can actually get a lot of clarity and a lot of value added to our work. And uh, there are a few things which we did not have time to cover. One is the test generator and the UI mode. So in case you are kind of like afraid to start writing these tests on your own, Playwright offers the possibility to actually generate this test with some kind of uh, 
clicking uh, interface. So it's even for very, very beginners, it's quite easy to get started. It's also possible to do accessibility testing with Playwright. So they are tools uh, the same way, for example, we saw some kind of performance utilities from WordPress. We have accessibility utilities from other packages. It's also possible to do visual comparison. So we can check, for example, if you are working with CSS to check if we introduce some kind of bugs, did that have any impact on certain elements? It's possible with Playwright. And then two other pages that I want to highlight is the best practices page. Just like go over if you ever uh, want to get deeper into writing text, tests. And obviously the popular migration, which is helpful if you already used the um, previous test util from WordPress, because this gives you like a kind of like step-by-step -step process how to migrate your all test to Playwright because the syntax is quite similar and it's not that complicated. Uh, and as I shared this material and this uh, sample projects is publicly available, you can go there, you can dig a bit more through the files and um, see how things play together. <clears throat> 